Amidst the world's turmoil, there's one military asset whose role has become indispensable. This is a helicopter specifically designed for a vital mission, rescue. It's known as the Sikorsky HH-60G Pave Hawk. Although it might superficially resemble the Black Hawk variant, the Pave Hawk is the result of extreme modifications. Its primary DNA is clear to penetrate danger zones and take the highest risks, all to bring home trapped heroes. In tense global situations, the Pave Hawk's existence, with its advanced technology, superior range, and robust defense systems, serves as a reminder of the importance of human life amidst heated circumstances. In this video, we'll thoroughly uncover the secrets of the legendary Pave Hawk. We'll look at its history as the backbone of rescue operations, the unique features that enable it to operate in difficult situations, and its continued essential role amidst current global dynamics. Indeed, the Pave Hawk is incredibly important, even though it will eventually be replaced by its successors. However, understanding the Pave Hawk means understanding the humanitarian and rescue aspect amidst military challenges. Let's start by dissecting the Pave Hawk from the outside, observing every detail that makes it the aerial savior. Specifically, the Pave Hawk, or its full name, the Sikorsky Double H60G Pave Hawk, is a specialized version of the Black Hawk helicopter. The United States Air Force, USAF, has operated this helicopter since the early 1980s. Its primary role is crystal clear, combat search and rescue, CSAR. This means that if personnel need evacuating from a combat zone or dangerous area, the Pave Hawk is ready to pick them up. Dimension-wise, this helicopter is nearly 20 meters long and about five meters high. The main parts of the Pave Hawk include the main rotor on top, the fuselage or main body, the cockpit at the front, and the cabin directly behind it. Further to the rear, you'll find the tail, stabilator, and the tail rotor at the very end. It's also worth noting that each of these helicopters is valued at approximately 40 million US dollars. Regarding its range, the Pave Hawk uses jet fuel. It's equipped with main fuel tanks, as well as auxiliary fuel tanks at the front, which you can spot from behind the main cabin. The importance of these auxiliary fuel tanks lies in the fact that a regular Black Hawk doesn't have them, allowing the Pave Hawk to fly much longer and cover greater distances. The refueling process for this helicopter can be done in two primary ways. First, of course, is on the ground, where the crew uses a connection on the left side. However, its most crucial feature is the Pave Hawk's ability to refuel while in flight. This is incredibly important when there's no time to land or a mission needs immediate completion. In such situations, they'll use an air refueling probe. The helicopter will fly behind a tanker aircraft like the HC-130J, which specifically carries additional fuel for the Pave Hawk. At the tip of the tanker aircraft's wing, there's a fueling pod with a connector extending from its rear. The Pave Hawk then flies closer from behind, extends its air refueling probe, and carefully connects it to the fueling drogue. Once connected, fuel is immediately transferred to the Pave Hawk. Interestingly, two helicopters can be refueled simultaneously. This entire process, called aerial refueling, AR, usually only takes about 10 to 20 minutes to fully fill the tanks. Sometimes the Pave Hawk also needs to use a fuel dump tube to quickly reduce weight if necessary. Next, let's look at how the Pave Hawk defends itself and navigates from its external side. The Pave Hawk is equipped with missile warning sensors, which immediately inform the crew if a missile is launched toward the helicopter. Additionally, there's a radar warning receiver, letting the crew know if they're detected by enemy radar. Moving to its nose, there's a radio room containing communication equipment, as well as a color weather radar used to detect storms so the crew can avoid flying in bad weather. 
The underside of the nose also features a forward-looking infrared FLIR camera, which significantly aids nighttime visibility. Not to be forgotten is the LARS antenna, lightweight airborne recovery system, which helps locate survivors below. For vital additional protection on the battlefield, the Pavehawk is fitted with chaff and flare buckets on both sides. The flare buckets, facing forward, are deployed to disrupt heat-seeking missiles that have locked onto the target. Meanwhile, chaff tubes are fired upwards and backward, releasing small metallic strips towards the tail rotor to create a chaff cloud, similar to a thin smoke, to confuse enemy radar. This area is called the aft transition bay, where more electronic equipment is stored. On the side of the Pave Hawk, there are several steps for foot placement to facilitate maintenance and pre-flight checks. Now let's understand how the Pave Hawk helicopter is actually flown. So if we want to move forward, backward, or left and right, how do we do it? First, let me show you this vital mechanism in the center, the swash plate assembly. It consists of the main swash plate the rotor mast, and four pitch control rods connected directly to each rotor blade. This swash plate has a unique capability. It can move up or down, which will affect the angle of attack of all four blades simultaneously. Additionally, the swash plate can also tilt sideways, changing the angle of attack of some blades more than others. When you see it spinning, each blade is constantly changing its angle. For example, if we focus on just one blade, when it's on the right side, it's flat. But when it's on the left side, it will be more tilted. This means that the lift generated is different on different sides of the helicopter. And this is what functions to steer the helicopter. In short, this swash plate mechanism is the primary way to control the helicopter. One thing that is often difficult to understand here is gyroscopic precession a phenomenon that occurs in rotating objects and is vital for helicopters. For instance, if you want to pitch the helicopter forward, you might think you need to add lift to the rear of the rotor blades. However, if you do that, the helicopter will actually roll to the left. Because when we apply force, the effect is only felt after 90 degrees of rotation. So to pitch the helicopter forward, we actually need greater lift on the left side. If this is your first time hearing about gyroscopic precession, it might sound a bit strange. The good news is that helicopter pilots don't have to actively think about it while flying. However, understanding it is certainly very useful. Now that we know how the rotor works, let's return to the flight controls in the cockpit. There are three main controls we've briefly discussed collective, cyclic, and tail rotor pedals. Let's explain the function of each. Collective. This is the control for moving the helicopter up or down. When you pull the collective up, the swash plate lifts, increasing the helicopter's lift for ascent. Conversely, when the collective is pushed down, the swash plate lowers, reducing lift and making the helicopter descend. Cyclic. This central control is used to move the helicopter forward, backward, left, or right. When the pilot moves the cyclic, the swash plate tilts, causing uneven lift on one side, which then moves the helicopter. This system automatically adjusts for gyroscopic precession so the pilot only needs to move the cyclic in the desired direction. Tail rotor pedals. These pedals, of course, use the tail rotor to rotate the helicopter left or right. This is also known as yaw control or vertical rotation. If the left pedal is pushed, the angle of the tail rotor blades increases, rotating the helicopter to the left. Meanwhile, pushing the right pedal will decrease the blade angle rotating the helicopter to the right. So in short, the collective is for up or down, 
The cyclic is for forward, backward, sideways, and the tail rotor pedals are for rotating left or right. It's important to note that these three controls govern the swashplate assembly and the phenomenon of gyroscopic precession. And these principles generally apply to most helicopters, not just the Pave Hawk. Moving to the cabin, which is accessible via a sliding door on the side. The cabin is typically crewed by four people, the pilot, co-pilot, and two Special Mission Aviators, SMAs, also known as Flight Engineers. Depending on the mission, the Pavehawk can also carry pararescue men, PJAs, or additional rescue personnel. Generally, two Pavehawks will fly in formation to support each other. Inside this cabin, the primary armament is also mounted, namely a GAU-2 minigun on each side, operated by the Special Mission Aviators. This weapon is capable of firing up to 4,000 rounds per minute for aggressive self-defense. For rapid evacuation in the field, there's a FRIES bar on the cabin ceiling. This bar can be extended outward with fast ropes, allowing PJs to quickly descend to the ground when the helicopter cannot land. If casualties need to be pulled into the helicopter, a hoist is available. A powerful hydraulic cable system 61 meters long with a weight limit of 272 kilograms. The heart of the Pave Hawk consists of two General Electric T701C turboshaft engines. These engines work by rotating a shaft that drives the main rotor blades. Uniquely, unlike jets, helicopters don't use backward thrust, but instead rely on the rotation of the shaft for the rotors. The tail rotor is also powered by the same engines, functioning to balance the torque from the main rotor and provide additional lift. In the middle of the helicopter, there's an auxiliary power unit, APU, a small engine that provides electrical power and starts the main engines. Moving to the most visible parts, the four main rotors above, these function like the helicopter's wings. As they move quickly, they create lift. However, unlike toy helicopters or drones that increase lift by spinning the blades faster, Full-sized helicopters like the Pavehawk work differently. Their main rotors spin at a constant speed. This rotational speed stabilizes once the engines reach full throttle. On the Pavehawk, the rotors spin at 258 revolutions per minute. To generate lift, it's not the rotational speed that's changed, but rather the angle of the rotor blades. This affects the angle of attack. Increasing the angle will generate more lift, making the helicopter ascend. Conversely, decreasing the blade angle will reduce lift, causing the helicopter to descend or accelerate its descent. There's an important phenomenon when the turbo shaft engines spin the four large rotor blades in one direction. The main body of the helicopter will tend to rotate in the opposite direction. Without intervention, the helicopter would spin uncontrollably. This is why we have a tail rotor. This tail rotor provides counter torque or rotational force in the opposite direction, stabilizing the helicopter to prevent uncontrolled spinning. If you notice, the Pavehawk's tail rotor isn't mounted straight, but is slightly tilted 20 degrees. This tilt also provides a bit of lift at the rear of the helicopter, helping to balance the tail's weight. Additionally, each of the four tail rotor blades can change its angle of attack to influence airflow. Increasing the angle of attack is done when turning left and decreasing it when turning right. Finally, let's discuss how the Pave Hawk can be transported and what its future holds. Sometimes the Pave Hawk helicopter needs to be moved to very distant locations. For this, Special preparations are made to make its size more compact. The four main rotor blades can be folded towards the tail and locked. The tail rotor and stabilator can also be folded. With all these adjustments, the Pave Hawk becomes much more compact, 
and can be loaded into large transport aircraft like the C-17, which can even carry two units simultaneously. In rare, extreme situations, the entire tail section can also be folded. Although the double H-60G Pavehawk has been flying for almost 40 years, it will now be replaced by a new generation helicopter, the HH-60W Jolly Green II. This new helicopter brings significant improvements to its avionics systems, fuel tanks, engines, armor plating, and of course, its weaponry. Ultimately, the HH-60G Pavehawk has proven itself as the backbone of rescue missions. Its exceptional capabilities, from its advanced systems to its toughness in difficult terrain, make it a reliable savior. Although the Pavehawk era will end with the arrival of the Jolly Green II, its heroic legacy and role as a rescue helicopter will never fade from the history of military aviation.